right, YouTube. Uh, hope you're having a great day. This this is uh, commonly referred to as a hand nugget. This is a, a basic starter pistol. I posted a review a long time ago when I got it. It's incredibly cheap. They're about $99. The ammunition, however, is stupid expensive. But this is a lot of people's first foray into handgun ownership. And uh, it's kind of a piece of shit. They're fairly accurate, and they don't recoil at all. But the ammunition sucks to acquire. The double action pull is pretty much unusable. And single action's not that great either. That being said, if you only have $90 and you don't want a high point, it's not a bad way to get into firearms ownership. But I would stay away from the hand nugget if I were you. Now the next step up from the hand nugget, here you have the Zestava M88. And this is a Toker F variant in 9mm. They're kind of hard to find nowadays. I believe the Zestava stopped importing them. But they're small, they're thin, they fit well in the hand, they got a good ergonomic grip. They shoot like shit. And they're fairly reliable, but they're not terribly accurate, and they bounce around a lot. Despite the fact that you have a good solid grip and you're well in the gun and it's got a low bore axis, not the greatest. Now here you have the Tokarev, the design the M88s derive from. Now this is a Polish model, so it's got the decent import safety on it. It's sort of easy to actually actuate. It's right there, it's a thumb safety. It's in a familiar position for anybody who's ever used an M16. And uh, this thing, if you shoot Bulgarian surplus, is a goddamn, f it's a flamethrower. The thing just shoots giant fireballs and lots of sparks, has a hell of a lot of kick. That being said, it's stupidly accurate and is a whole lot of fun to play with. So I would recommend these, they're about $230, but not the greatest to introduce, you know, a small woman for shooting. Now, if you're getting into, a, if you can only have one gun, it's going to be bedside protection, and it's also going to be a range toy, this might be an option. This is a Glock 17, showing a whole lot of TW25, where I over-lubed it a little bit, and some paint where it may or may not have fallen down on my safe. That being said, it's a great little gun. It's very accurate. It's uh, got pretty much one control here. you got the trigger, you got the magazine release, and you got the slide release. But really, all you have to worry about is the magazine release and the trigger. They're both right there. It's got a good grip texture. It's got a really awkward aiming angle, so you have to really think about it. you got a decent sight picture, but when you're gripping it, your hand, if you're an American shooter and you've shot pistols before, wants to point it up. And that's kind of a pain in the ass. A lot of people hate these and call them tactical Tupperware. I used to be at that school myself, but now I kind of like this one. But, if I'm going to go for a full size, you'll notice there are two here on the table. This is the CZ-75. It weighs a lot more than the Glock. It's a lot prettier than the Glock. It's DASA, meaning you can, you can shoot it in double action or in single action. You don't have to rack the slide to enable it to fire. The striker fired mechanism is different than a hammer fired, and this is a hammer fired. This particular one is a BD, meaning it's a decocker. So if I have it cocked and there's a round in the chamber, I can just pull the decocker down a lot harder than I'm apparently pulling it right now, and it'll go down to half cock, so you don't have to worry about shooting yourself in the leg quite as much. Uh, they're great pistols, they're incredibly accurate. I qualified on a rifle target, 25 meters with one of these, and actually qualified sharpshooter. Now this is my personal one right here. This is a CZ-75B, meaning it's got a safety. When you actuate the safety, you can't move the slide. And it's a, it's a nice little gun. The easy to actuate safety is pretty good. The controls, I have tiny little hobbit hands, so it's kind of hard to get to the controls, so I just rack the slide to get it to go forward in the battery. Now another full size option, I mean these are about $500. This for a civilian is about six to 650. Now this right here I got used for $700. You can find them new around eight, eight fifty, and a lot of people really like the looks of these. Cause I mean, look at this damn gun. I kind of want to jizz my pants right now just just talking about it. This is a 1911 from Springfield Armory. This is a mil spec. If you notice, the beaver tail isn't quite as pronounced, but it does have the flared and lowered ejection port, the flared magwell, so it's easier to feed magazines in there quickly. See that bevel right there? That's not normally on a GI. Uh, it's a cool pistol. I haven't shot it yet because I forgot it last time I went to the range, which is one of the one of the dangers of going to the range hungover quite often. But it's got a great fucking trigger. I mean, that trigger feels so good. And uh, it's got a great sight picture. You got nice combat sights, just three dots, like normal modern pistols. And that's good. It's single action only, so it's not a great beginner's pistol. You have to get used to working that. Now, Nate, you had a 1911 as your first pistol. That I did. And you managed to... You managed to use that damn thing pretty effectively. You were, a, you were a crack shot with that before it got all worn out and wonky and you had to trade it off or something. Now, there are good beginner's pistols if you have the patience and the wherewithal to, to want to learn and to be okay with occasionally dicking it up and putting safety on and not knowing how to work the slide and get a little pissed off. 
it's okay if you have the patience to stick with it, it's a great gun. Now we're going to move into carry guns. This is a Beretta Nano. It's 9mm, six, uh, 6 plus 1, meaning 6 in the magazine, 1 in the chamber. It's basically a Glock style. You can see there the striker plate. It's just striker fired, meaning you have to rack the slide, chamber around, drop the magazine, put another round in the magazine, put it back in to get your full 7 capacity. It's got that trigger safety right in the middle of the trigger. The trigger pull is actually pretty decent. It's not too long. I mean, Beretta is known for a crappy double action trigger, but this one they did pretty good. And for so tiny, it actually sticks pretty well in your hand, considering you got this pinky floating around out here doing God knows what, going to Woodstock and shit while the rest of your hand's trying to shoot. It works pretty good. I really don't have any complaints about it, and it fits in my pocket and looks like a cell phone. Now here, we have the Smith & Wesson MMP9. Now these, their saving grace is that magazine shelf they have. It's a pinky extension, so you get your whole hand on this tiny ass little gun. It's got a good ergonomic grip. It's got that nice fat back strap. This is the medium size, because once again I have hobbit hands. It's got great sight picture. I mean, you can look at the sight picture there. Easy to acquire, gigantic three dot white sights. It's just good. It's solid, I haven't had a problem with it, it's been accurate as hell. It's got a weird hinge trigger, instead of the centerpiece, the Glock style triggers. So when you pull it down, the bottom of the hinge trigger disengages the pin block safety. And uh, it's got a great trigger pull, and it's got really cool little fishtail serrations, and it's a damn good gun. I like it a lot, and I carry it whenever it's a little bit cooler out, and I can have a little bit baggier pants. Now this is Nate's new gun, which we haven't got to go shoot yet. CZ P07 Duty, CZ75 P07 Duty. I think you'll notice a theme here with the large amounts of technology we have floating around on this table. Now CZ75s are fucking fantastic guns. This is smaller, it's basically the size of a CZ75 compact, except it's polymer framed, stupidly aggressively stippled. The Czechs are not a stupidly aggressive people, but they can, they can stipple something aggressively. It almost makes up for all that ass kicking they took at the hands of the Nazis in 1939. Now, if you were defending the Sudetenland, and you had one of these, that nice Glock style, the cup and ball, it's, I mean, it's easy to... It's easy to acquire. The trigger pull is as good as a CZ75 full size. It's not as heavy. It's probably going to kick a lot more. But it takes down pretty this, pretty much the same way. It's got a nice decocker. Uh, it's got the decocker installed now. It also comes with a regular safety. So you can either have it in B or BD configuration from the factory in the box without paying any more money. And it's cheaper than a CZ75 that's all steel. It's a pretty damn good deal. And uh, Nate didn't get hosed on it. Partially thanks to me. So you're welcome. Mostly Nate. thanks to you. <laughs> all right. Now here you have the FMP9. Now this is a big competitor to something like the CZ75 P01 Duty. This one shoots real well. I've actually had, you know, I've gotten to take it out of the range. It's not mine. It's uh, the guy that owns the CZ75 decocker version here on the table. And he's been lusting after an FN for a long time. He finally came and, you know, finger banged my CZ and took it out of the range and shot it and wound up buying one himself. So he put off buying one of these for a couple months. But then he saw this one used for $450 and couldn't resist. Which it is a pretty good deal. It takes down like a SIG P250, you just pull it back, you rotate that little lever, the whole top comes off. Um, it feels cheaper than the P07 does in my hand. It's, it feels lighter, but thicker. The grip's good. Partially it's helped out by this little little hoag slip-on grip here. It feels cheap but good. It's got, the, it's got a, a nice safety here. It's actually a safety and a decocker. So you can slide it up into safe, put it down to fire, and put it all the way down to decock. And that is a really cool feature. It's also got excellent sights. You get the nice three dot sights that are pretty much standard now for anything. And uh, it looks nifty. That flat dark earth. I mean that coyote tan, whatever the hell you want to call it, depending on what company you're, uh, you're a fanboy of when it comes to paint. But the Duracoat, you know, FDE or the FN, whatever the hell FN calls it, probably something Belgian and weird. It's more of a dark burnt waffle. So this is burnt waffle tan right here. Burnt waffle tan, pretty attractive color, especially with the grips on there. It looks operator is all shit. Like, you could go in the jungles of Vietnam right now, shoot yourself some Viet Minh, and it would uh, be very effective. It's got good capacity compared to some of the other, you know, the other compacts. FN has fantastic capacity in their smaller pistols. I mean, hell, they get 16 rounds in a 45, which is pretty damn good. And uh, it was real accurate. Point A and point impact weren't that different. And it was real easy to control, despite the fact that it's so light, it feels like it might float away in your hand. So while I would go for the P07 Duty, and that's the way I steered uh, old Nate the cameraman here, it's, uh, it's still a good gun and not a bad way to go.